And now, the finale of Ghost Town Blues. Detective Camry and his oldest childhood friend, Motley, embark on a journey for the lost outlaw gold in the forgotten town of Vulture, Nevada. Along the way, the pair spend the night in an abandoned vacation home to outlast the raging blizzard outside, where Walter is jerked awake by a violent nightmare from his past. It is now the morning after, and Walter and Motley slowly ride atop their Brahmin mounts to continue their search for the lost town. I didn't mean to say anything, but couldn't help but hear you herking and jerking around your sofa last night. One well, of them ghouls didn't get a bite out of you, did they? <laughs> no, no. Just a bad night terror. It was about old times, you know. Ah, I see. It, it wasn't... Yeah. Yeah, it's what you think. Oh, I'm sorry, boy. I told you that that day still bothers me. I don't think it's going to leave any of us. Nope. If I hadn't left us by now, it's going in the grave. I assumed as much. Uh, say, I never asked what happened to our branch in the mountains. I met a lot of good folks in there as a kid, and some of them were slaves. I never told you. Your father and I was wrong. Those brotherhoods kept pestering our neighborhood because they sent a dispatch looking for us. Must have got ourselves noticed sometime before by some concerned citizens. Them power armor boys had a trail on us for nearly a year. Really? So, what happened? They level the place? Well, they finally scouted the place when they realized people were living past the canyon and in the mountains. They sent one of those whirly birds over to canvas the place. Until one of us naturally took some pot shots at it. Ugh. And the next day, we get a visit from the whole party. They lit up the place good somewhere around evening time. Me and a few of the others strategically minded begged the centurions to evacuate the kids and saves. But they were ordered to us to stand our ground. It wasn't until they all died that the remainder of us scattered at will. Oh. Wouldn't take them about an hour to completely level the place. Jeez. I don't know if I'm happy that happened or conflicted. Either way, the place got what it deserved. But not all those innocents. That's the cost of war, Walter. It wasn't on the Brotherhood either. It was on our actions. But look, Motley. The thing's going haywire. And a dust storm's brewing up. Now, hold on a second. I got it. We're right on top of it. Good man, Walter. What does this mean for us now? Well, <clears throat> this should mean that the town should be just up ahead a little further. Might as well unpack those ponchos. That storm isn't getting any calmer. Now we may <clears throat> burn alive in these rags, but and sure as heck beats getting skinned alive by radioactive sand. Not a terrible analysis, partner. But they both sound pretty equal to me. What's the status on that pip bar, son? <coughs> it's picking up faint little structures just up ahead. We should be getting close. It's gonna be mighty difficult looking for a treasure in a place that's constantly getting buried. There shouldn't be a problem. We should be exiting the very back of the sandstorm in just a minute. In that case, I hope you're right. Even if we don't find it, this sure was the vacation. <laughs>
If there was one thing that frightened humanity pre- and post-war, it was the unknown, the uncharted, and living your life amongst other human beings in an unstable society was one thing. Our fellow travelers could tell you stories about the other places people managed to rise from the ashes and try again. But there were some areas, some places a fellow would never go to, places of which atomic war had turned completely upside down. Unexplained weather, unknown creatures, strange phenomena. This whole stretch was one of those places. At least no death clause. <laughs> yeah, we made it through all right, and with quite a breathtaking welcome wagon. We had to nearly choke our Brahmin to stop because the moment we passed through the cloud, the most jagged cliff top I have ever seen was waiting for us. After we removed our face coverings and goggles, a crooked little sign reading historical sight ahead let me know we were there. For just beyond the cliffside lay the most textbook description of a ghost town. Skinny buildings made with wood as dark as pitch, some of them half buried in the sand. Yep, this was Vulture. Looky here. You could barely make out the signs that hung above these old wrecks. Saloon, doctor's office, barber shop. It's a town captured in time. For an abandoned place with more than 300 years under its belt, atop a nuclear war, I'd say the town's done pretty well for itself. It's not much but a short stretch of buildings, but you won't find anything like this anywhere else. You think anyone lives here now? If they were, we would have already heard from them. Nope. This town smells like a dusty antique shop. No life for a very long time. A little relieved by that, actually. Well, we better get to searching before dark. And let me tell you, even if we find the darn safe, these old eyes won't be able to crack it when the sun sleeps. Understood. I don't want you going through any more off-road walking, so you take the town while I take the hills up there. No, oh, you and your worrying. <laughs> but all right, I prefer the town anyway. It speaks to my character. This place was something, all right, but not worthy of Radio New Vegas' top headline. Vulture, a town once bustling with cowboys and ranchers, now an empty shell of ancient history. It was too much of a bother trying to live here, but it would be a genius idea with all the natural disasters protecting it. I trekked up the rocky hillsides that overlooked the northern side of town. It was relaxing, but those mine shafts weren't. After scrapping through the three I found and a few ghouls, the prospects were absolute zero. No, Buster may have been in a hurry, but it wouldn't have been this obvious. Still, a safe was a safe, and it was heavy enough to drag down the rear of a horse. No, that madam would have kept it hidden more domestically. What the? Motley, what was that? <laughs> Sorry to wake you up there, partner. Was that too much dynamite? <laughs> How much of that stuff did you use? I can see the smoke cloud all the way over here. Oh, rolling the stuff. What you just saw there is the saloon. But it's what's underneath it that'll strike your fancy. You're kidding. I'm waiting on the safe to cool down so I can get to work on it right now. Go on, get on over here. Loud and clear, Motley. Good work. It's official. We were the first people to step foot in Vulture in over 200 years. Underneath the saloon? Someone would have cracked that case a long time ago if given the opportunity. Or maybe this was just one of those treasures that was hiding right under your nose the whole time. I did right by bringing Motley here. Had it just been me, I would have spun something so obvious into nationwide conspiracy. <laughs> no, Walter. <laughs> you silly. 
It was under the floorboards. Motley! Motley, are you in here? Hmm. Old man must have gone on a bathroom break. <laughs> and goodness knows, age does that to you more. The safe! Great Scott, look at that thing! Hardly a speck of rust, and already cracked open. My gosh, it's as if they were brand new. Look at them. As I looked upon this valued stack of metal glistening in the sunlight, it almost made the criminal I once was weak in the knees. What an incredible moment in this new world of rock and dust. Real gold, untouched by man for centuries. I've got to give Seth his credit for suggesting I look here. And thanks to the old skills of Motley, the search wouldn't have been in vain. Or so I thought. You both have been very resourceful. It's become clear that your past credentials were well deserved, but wasted all the same. However, out of all you wish to bury from your glory days, the one thing you truly forgot was that the eyes of Caesar never blink. They took me, Walter. They took me after I unlocked the safe and everything. They must have been following us the whole time. What say you, traitor? Based on your expertise, I would be pleasantly surprised if you had no inkling this would happen. The other patsies in those red ballpark uniforms are as common as horseflies in my area. But you... I'd know that headdress anywhere. You're Frumentari, aren't you? Vulpus in Calta. Yes. Head of Legion Frumentari. Perhaps you've heard of the fate of Nipton by now. That was my doing. <laughs> Another professional snake. What else can I say except I'm shocked that you and the boys thought we were so important for this little gathering. Refrain from flattering yourself, Wildo. Or shall I say, Walter. Either way, this is for the gold and to have you atone for your sins. The blight of the NCR is a moral priority to vanquish, but a turncoat? You're simply walking abominations. Who sold me out? The man you only know as Seth, of course. If you hadn't considered someone with a knowledge base as wide as his suspicious, I would doubt your deduction skills. I see. Indeed. Knowing what I know about your father and his legacy, he would have taken care of you a long time ago if he knew what you'd become. A shell of a man, wasting his gifts to serve profligates and those who would seek to end us. And so, now that we walk your side of the river, we thought it an appropriate time to end the runt that dishonors the name of Caesar. All the while cashing in on the gold and not kicking up any suspicion from House or the rest of the Mojave. Smart move, Wolfman. What makes you think it ends here, hmm? Walter! They're gonna try and pin us up on that wood! Please! Please, whatever you do, don't let them do it to me! Anything but that! Oh, you wouldn't last beyond the first nail, old man. Let him go, Volpes. Duly. <laughs> Motley! I'm sorry. <coughs> that leaves one more loose end. Now, lower your arms and drop your weapon. I'm in the mood for fire today. Sure, Mac.
her. Fine, George, you look a mess. I had the army put out a region-wide APB for you. Are you okay? What, where's your friend? Did you drop him off? <sighs> put Arroyo on the phone. <laughs> what? Uh, okay. Um, yes. No, this is his partner. We spoke briefly this morning. Yes. I think you'd like to speak with him right now. You will. Thank you. I'll pass it over to him now. What happened? WB Investigations? Speaking. Walter! Good to hear from you again. What's troubling you? Sounds as if you accidentally bumped into a mole rat's nest. <laughs> yeah. If only. <clears throat> Say, um, look. I know it's late, so I'll be quick about it. It doesn't sound like all went as planned. No, uh, it didn't. I lost my assistance and the package. It was some elaborate setup from the get-go, apparently. Well, that's... I'm so sorry, Walter. Would it be anyone we know? I regret to report it was our friends from the Bull. They have agents everywhere, and they're starting to reach high places, only further confirming my fears. Look, they took everything, just as we had our hands on it, and I can highly doubt a second attempt made on that gold. It belongs to them now. Is there anything, anything, that can compare in order to get our hands on that Chrysalis? I can't help but feel the walls are closing in. <sighs> I'm sorry, Walter, but for one of the village's most sacred possessions, that, or something of equal value, would need to be exchanged. I know you understand. I do. But look, all because you missed out on this score doesn't mean finding an alternative would be an impossibility. Don't think for a second we'd want a scourge as bad as them getting a grip on your home. I still want an avenue where this doesn't end in tragedy for the two of you. Or anyone in the Mojave. Mr. Camry, contact me once you get a hold of the proper compensation. It, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to deny a person. It's perfectly understandable, sir. Bunny and I will come up with another way with our heads together. And thank you. Walter, I am so sorry. About Motley. About everything. Thank you, Bunny. <clears throat> I suppose I have a lot to tell you about that you've been owed for quite a while now. My past is at the back doorstep, and it would be better if you knew prior than to get a fistful of it when it's too late. If. It's too late. Right. Listen, I need to let someone else know how things turned out before dawn. I'll be gone for but a moment. It's pretty important. Okay, Walter. Please watch yourself. I'll have a bath ready for you when you get back. Thanks, Bun. You're the best. So as you can see... The Legion has no different a mindset than those who follow the code of Emerita. But instead of earning your place at the table, you're born with the curse, like it or not. It takes a spiritual awakening to truly switch mindsets from that life. But it leaves scars. You either end up a total recluse or end up appreciating the beauty in life. Molly was a little bit of both. But I suspect I was too young to recover from the horrors I witnessed by a full-fledged legionnaire. Oh, Wildo. If only you knew the truth back then. Hmm. I'll be keeping an active file on this Vulpes character. Nipton was all him? What a monster. What else can I say? He may have won this hand, but the fool sent me home knowing he ratted out a rat. And I know what to do with rats. Hold your horses! Yes? The library's closed. 
Do you have any idea what time it is? Our way. Yep, young or old, Kaisar's boys keep each of its brothers somewhat in that mindset. It's in the blood, they say, but in my case, I disagree. If that were the case, I'd be as murderous as my old man. No, I like to think I kept the family genes back when he was Jim, not Septimus. He was a hard man, but a good man. Did what needed to be done if it was called for, but also knew when to love and be a father. That's the man I remember. The catch? Kaisar was here, and he wasn't going to let up until the Mojave and Hoover Dam were his. So sometimes you have to play a little unorthodox to beat them at their own game. So every once in a while, I did as the Romans did. This has been another incredible mystery of Walter and Bunny. Walter was impersonated by Eric Huffman, Bunny by Sharon Grunwald, Motley, Seth, Volpez, Magnus, and The Chosen One by Harrison Bullman, Septimus by Philip Sacramento, Brotherhood of Steel by Brendan Sutherland, written and produced by Preston Harding. Edited and mixed by Ethan Walsh. To Joel Jackal, Michael D. Batkew, and Thomas Kane, A-Bomb Radio thanks you for being wonderful patrons. Tune in next time for another adventure of Walter and Bunny.